All right, guys, we got a limited amount of time, big, infinite topic, which is space, okay? My name's Grant Blaisdell. I'm CEO and co-founder of Copernic Space. We're the leading and pioneering platform that is tokenizing real-world space assets and what we call financial space assets and listing them on a marketplace to democratize access, ownership, utility, and benefits in the space economy to all of you. Okay, who am I? Who is this crazy guy on stage talking about space and stuff? Me, I come, this is a third generation legacy that we're building on. It started with my grandfather, he built the original space program in Poland, and as the earliest works I know of around the idea of democratizing access to space. So these are like the values, the roots that this company was built off of. Me personally, I've been in the blockchain space for over a decade. Uh, before this, I built CoinFirm. It's the best big data analytics and AML platform for crypto and blockchain assets. So I've been deep in the trenches for over a decade now in this industry, not as a speculator, but as a builder of legitimate solutions that provide legitimate solutions on the market, okay? Um, that other person next to me, AKA Lady Rocket, that's my mother. That's my co-founder. So you understand that this is a company that lives and thrives off those values. Point is, is that we know what we're doing around space and we have a track record of creating successful startups and innovative solutions utilizing this technology. What is the space economy? People don't even get that term as a whole. Um, the space economy is filled with thousands of companies and startups on one end, okay? The projections on it make all these other markets we talk about generally look relatively small. And this is just the beginning. We're just scratching the surface on it. There's a huge demand from the commercial and consumer side to access space as well, okay? But what's the issue? You know, Manu very well kind of, in this DeSci space, there's a little bit of similarities to this. Actually, a lot of the issues crypto had in its early days are issues the space is facing. So what's the issue? On one end, you have those thousands of companies creating, as space has for the past 60 years and will at more scale in the future, creating the most important technological solutions to improve life on Earth. That comes out of space, okay? So you got thousands of these guys on one end. You got millions of people, consumers, investors, corporations on one end. A $500 billion market already. How big do you think the entertainment industry is? Guess what? It's about $50 billion, the entire entertainment industry. Okay, so look at a very immature market that's $500 billion market, but has no market. No one has built what I call the economic infrastructure for the new space economy with the marketplace, the applications on top to facilitate discovery, transactions, utilization, and tradability of what we call space assets. So there's a massive demand that's not being met. And here's the amazing thing about blockchain tech. This is the biggest opportunity for blockchain tech that's ever existed. All these other markets you're talking about have decades of legacy systems, bureaucracies, administrative processes. The space economy is a blank slate because it's so young. So we have a once in a lifetime really opportunity to install blockchain at the core infrastructure level, because don't let people fool you, it's an infrastructure tech. It's not there for fun little pictures, it's there for infrastructure. To install blockchain at the core foundation of what's gonna be the largest and most important market and asset class in the world. There's a reason all the richest, smartest guys are leaving their jobs and going into it. It's not just ego. So what are we doing? We're creating that economic infrastructure utilizing blockchain and then placing the marketplace, the applications on top under these standards we build with space companies to facilitate all of this, to democratize access, ownership, utility of the space economy and save these space companies and entrepreneurs. You know why? They're genius guys who are solving these big issues but they're not marketers, they're not sellers, they're not financiers. It's much like what the science academic community is facing. So what do we have to do? We have to build the models and the marketplace that is built specifically for their needs in the dynamic of space economy. VCs are not going to fund space. They don't have enough money or risk capital. The government's shrinking piece of cheese with more rats chasing guests them. The future of space is owned through you and funded through you, just like crypto was. So what are we really looking to do? And this is our, our lovely advisor. I was just on the phone with him. He ran space commerce for the US Department of Commerce. We're taking space and scaling it, making it accessible and turning it from a couple massive transactions annually to millions of transactions, both small so that people get involved as well as the big ones. How are we doing it? 
build that economic infrastructure, the tokenization engine. We utilize NFTs actually in the way that I think NFTs are going to be utilized in mass market in general, hidden from you in the back, but we're utilizing to represent real world space assets and the utilities that they provide, right? But people need to be able to access that and under models that work for space. So we create the marketplace for that that gives you guys the interface to discover, interact, transact, utilize, and trade all of these space assets. You might ask, hey buddy, I hear you. Thank you. Uh, you might ask, what are space assets, right? What are real world space assets? Pretty much anything of tangible value in the space economy. What we're most known for, for now, is payloads and missions, right? So, for example, SpaceX's business model is payload. They sell space inside of their rockets. Okay, so we've worked with companies over the years to build a standard on how to tokenize the space, how to commercialize that, and whoever's putting something in that space to turn that into a new asset that you can trade further on the marketplace. A verified asset that's in space. And that goes into the asset management. In the back end, on the platform, you all have these capabilities to utilize, trade, and even create new assets depending on the case. How do we look at this as a company uh, we understood that space is a culture. You have to emotionally engage people in the space because if you just throw space assets at them, they're like, oh, fuck, I don't know what this is. This is too much for me, right? So what do we do? We built a marketplace dedicated to the culture of space. Lots of art, great artists, music, etc. That's how we on emotionally onboard the general user onto our platform. And then what? We push them through into the real space asset opportunities. Space missions, we've already done successful ones around that. I'll get into that soon. Satellite imagery and related data is the holy grail to improve life on Earth. If you democratize, streamline that process for the wider commercial market, you can have tangible effects and positive effects and changes here on Earth. IP and patents is a big one, man, who's very focused on that. There's countless billions of dollars in IP that's locked into the space economy. Once again, all this tech stuff you're using here, that comes out of space. Pretty much anything that you love technologically originates in space applications. And then the, holy, the other holy grail, how do we build the models to fund this and incentivize investors and give investors liquidity around their investments? Because right now, space is exclusive, hyper expensive, and you got like a 20 year liquidity event timeline. Okay, so how do we unlock that? What have we done so far? Marketplaces are up, we're generating revenue, we show we can buy assets, space assets and flip them for entirely different ROI. We'll get into our moon mission. We have 2,000 assets going to the moon later this year that will be tokenized and you'll be able to buy ownership of and trade. We've shown that we can take physical rockets and we can create new revenue streams even for test flights. We did that last year, I'll talk about that more. And we're growing users. Hundreds and hundreds of paying users are participating in the space economy through our platform. And this extends into our growing list of partners, not just in the space economy. Because the space economy, is, space companies are just supply side. The big thing is, how do you grab the demand side of the space economy? So actually, we're more focused on finding the commercial buyers than we are courting more space companies. So here's an example last year. We took a European rocket company, we tokenized 24 physical slots, uh, well, one slot with 24 fractional available slots, uh, because what we do is we take a parent NFT that represents the supply, and then any confirmed asset that's put into that supply, it's a new child NFT generated to it that's tied to the parent. So you can verify whether this is an actual space asset, what mission, what payload it's tied to. So we did that with Perrin last year, 24 slots, sold it out in the day, uh, and some really awesome things went up, like Space Barbie here. So this went to some girls in Ukraine as a part of our Lady Rocket Foundation and stuff. So what are we doing? We just took an asset, an earthly asset, we sent it up to space, brought it back down, tokenized it, and increased its value. I call it asset spacification, okay? So this is our physical payload standard. This is our digital payload standard. So I realized that digital space uh, computation capacity in space is going to be much more scalable and in demand actually than physical space eventually. So what's the best way to prove your model? Do it yourself, okay? So we went, took our own capital, bought our own payload in Firefly's lunar lander, okay? 
And we have onboarded, like I said, around 2,000 unique assets from brands, companies, individuals, crypto projects, major tokens, charities, multi-million dollar art collections. I'll get into more of this in a sec. And it's launching in October, right? Right now we're working on updating the platform to create a dedicated interface for this moon sale, right? So second phase of the moon sale. And here's some of the people who are joining us. Uh, leading space companies, which is interesting. One of the biggest space companies in the world is using us, right? Whoop. Major crypto, crypto projects, they're on board. They're understanding how to create new value and new assets for their user base, for their project, their community. AI pioneers, our friends at Sophiaverse are going up, taking AI and sentience to the moon. Looking at the consumer brand, I was just talking to somebody about how to really fund space. I mean, how to fund science. Go to the brands, guilt them. They have all the money. I say Louis Vuitton's marketing budget is half of NASA's budget annually. Let that sink in. And loads of others. You might see some big four consultancies, some other big crypto projects. But we're here to talk about Croatia to the moon. Um, it ended up that we have uh, a bunch of Croatian individuals, companies, students uh, joining us on our moon mission. One, uh, there's a man named Zelimir Ilic. He's originally Croatian. He was actually my mother's boss decades ago. He ran Compaq and the biggest computer companies for Europe, Middle East, and Asia. He's collected uh, a 19th and 20th century fine art collection of the best Croatian artists. That's going to the moon later this year. We digitized it, official versions going to the moon, and you'll be able to buy and trade ownership of the most historic Croatian art collections ever. Avisa Space, it's a Croatian company. Guess what they're doing? They're sending their company registration to the moon. We turn that into a real world space asset. They go back to the Croatian government to verify it, stamp it, and you have the first official company registered on the moon. What's happening on the moon right now, which you guys don't realize, is that the infrastructure for the lunar economy is being built. 3D printers are going up. They're doing testing of communication. Uh, they're doing sending energy back from solar panels back to Earth. There's an entire market being built on, on the moon. All right, my mother and I have something called the Lady Rocket Foundation. Uh, we have space education programs, entrepreneurship programs in schools around the world. Ironically, our highest concentration of students is in Zagreb, okay? So what did we do? We said, kids, make us some art. We'll send it to the moon and you can then own it. So we have a collection of our students here in Croatia who are literally going to the moon and here's an example of that. So what's next? Phase two. Phase one, who and what's going up? Phase two is listing that on the marketplace. For us as a company, we foresee much more revenue in phase two if marketed and sold properly. So you have, once again, people who are there, what's happening next. If you want to join us at Cape Canaveral in October, that's the scheduled launch, you can do so. Also, what's next? Space Pool. That's the name of the application on our platform that is dedicated to financing space. Okay, models built for space. For example, this is a real world model, successful company in Germany, millions of dollars in contracted revenue with European Space Agency and others. But guess what? They need short term liquidity to fulfill those contracts. Who's going to fulfill that? VCs, not within their mandate. They don't give a shit. Uh, banks, they don't understand space. They're, they're scared. They'd rather take money from a baker with his contracts and give them a low interest loan. Space companies are stuck in a quagmire. What's the solution to that? You create a listing, obviously this will be a security, but you create a listing where people can finance that. They get back a token that represents their rights uh, at a set interest rate. Meaning, in this particular case, give six figures, get back a token, it's 10% interest, paid out three times over a one year agreement. Okay, and that's how you just saved a space company. And that's how you just create an incentive model for other people. I call it space staking, because to you guys, it's just staking. It's just, you're actually creating value in the world through it instead of just giving money to another guy to bet and fucking moving money around, which is pretty much the crypto market, right? When we started, this was zero when we started four years ago, okay? I left CoinFirm in 2020 to launch this. 
The concept is seven years old, and this is already old. You have some of the biggest players in various industries entering this convergence of blockchain and the space economy. How can you join? We feel we're not only setting the standard of how NFTs are going to be applied to this concept of real-world assets, what we call real-world space assets, but we also want to set the standard of how NFTs are viewed and tied to actual projects and platforms. Let's take it outside of, you know, Bored Ape, and let's attach real value and real knowledge exchange, transfer. Let's give people something outside of, please go up 100x today, okay? Because that's a losing battle in the long term. So we built space passports. Our passport holders include uh, entrepreneurs in crypto, space company leaders, great artists. But we're very selective about it in the sense of, like, if somebody comes in and they're like, I want to buy 100 passports and this is a real story, I tell them no. Buy 10 and we'll talk more and we'll build something of real value. So what do they get? First off, they become a reseller. You become a verified reseller on our platform. We have people generating revenue by reselling space opportunities on the platform. I'm not going to do it all my, my, by myself. I need your guys' help. So we built the incentive model to scale that, to grow that, okay? I can go into more. Uh, you can go and talk to our passport holders, etc. They'll tell you the value that they're pulling out of it. And I'll show you a fun one here in a second which deals with the Lady Rocket Foundation, okay? So we've been doing this for over 10 years. I told you what we're doing in Croatia, et cetera. And here's a cool crypto use case. That's CatCoin. That's a client on our moon mission, but they have a charitable aspect driven to animals. So what did my mom do with them yesterday? They went to the Vanderbilt Space Force Base, went to a SpaceX launch, then went to the cat shelter next to the SpaceX launch, donated money, got pizza, adopted some cats, and today they're doing another event to bring investors from Santa Barbara to funnel this. We call it profit for good, okay? So if you want to donate to the Lady Rocket Foundation, because we fund all of this ourselves to support, you know, Croatian students getting into space, et cetera, you got a little QR there. You want to get in on the, the pre-sale still of passports, you got it there. If you need this later, come up to me, I'll get it to you. Join waiting lists, talk to me, get in on the next opportunities. I get hits every day. Is the moon mission still available? Is it still open, et cetera? Uh, we have, right now I'm negotiating for future lunar missions, deep space missions, etc. Okay? Once again, we're a marketplace, so we onboard space companies and give scale to it. But when we see market opportunities, we take it ourselves. Okay? And here's a cool little QR for you guys to start bidding on what's going to be the first meme on the moon that you can own. And that's done by Axiom Space, one of the leading space companies in the world. And so we're starting to test out how do people value this? What is the value? We discovered what people want to send. What does humanity view as cool things to own on the moon? Now let's see how people value it, right? A revolution is on the way. How it's going to work, we'll see. Last but not least, uh, we're starting our seed round here soon. We're already supported by great VCs, great space investors, a lot of visionary angels. In a couple weeks, we're opening that round and enabling you not just to have ownership and deal flow through us into the space economy, but have ownership and access to the commercial and financial infrastructure marketplace for what's going to be the largest market in human history. Thank you, everybody.